Cleveland Giants. And with all our cash at 12.55 in Trucker Lenny, taking it from the request line. Fire 7 8 old oh, G 9 8 Shotgun Talk. It's 523 to Shotgun Tom Kelly. I got something going to make you feel good. And it's free. A free ride at Edgar Winter on G98. But Hello Cash is Skip O'Brien at 151 with a rock and roll at G98. Currently in the Lakefront City, it's 38 degrees. Our sky condition cloudy. Greg Anthony, G98 Total Information News. G98. 106 is WCCP Cleveland. Right after 5 and Tim Davison with Manfred Man's Earth Band. Blinded by the light. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Skip O'Brien. Hello, everybody. This is Skip O'Brien, and we are here today, September 22nd, 2018, at the WGCL G98 WZZP Zip 106 reunion. We have about 18 to 20 people that are scheduled to show up. So far, we've uh, already had uh, Greg Anthony is, uh, is here. There he is, newsman Greg Anthony. Tim Davison from G98. Hi, guys. Andrea over there, Klein Hands worked in sales. Yep. All right. Uh, over here, newsman Jack Callahan, Whoa. Fred Borgeli, who uh, was in sales at Zip 106. So we're going to get about uh, 15, 20 more. So welcome to the reunion. It's going to be a blast. Can't wait. And of course, Ray Glasser is here with us too. And he and Ray goes to all the DJ reunions. CKLW, Wixie, WRKO. He's been to all of them. So to not have Ray here would really be an injustice. So Ray, thank you for being here. Thank you, Skip. You're welcome. Wonderful. 
Loving it. still shots and video of this event. What he wants to do now, we all got to be quiet. He's going to quickly go around and uh, to each one of you, and all you have to do is say your first and last name and what stations you work for, and he's going to put together a whole uh, video. How many cards did he bring? Which <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hard drive, hard drive. Skip O'Brien. All right, start with you. Skip O'Brien, WGCLG98. And what are you doing now? <laughs> Attending this reunion. That's it. <laughs> All right, next up. No, wait, you forgot another important station. Skip O'Brien, WGCL G98 and WZZP Zip 106. And I'm retired and attending this reunion, and it's great. There you go. Okay. Next up. Jack Callahan, I worked at G98, and now I work at Fox News Radio. And wow, very good. A whole bunch of them in between. Too many. As usual. <laughs> All right, next up. Broadway Bill, I worked at WLYT. 
And in the middle of that, KFRC, TIC, FM, WCGQ, WL, uh, CLS, and now CBS FM in New York. Very good. Happy to be here. All right. Okay. Jack Fitzgerald, WGCL twice, and WZZP, and uh, I do marketing, consulting, and produce a national PBS show. Okay. And Thank delighted you. to be here. What a crowd. We all are. Yeah. Hi, Terry Patrick. I worked at uh, WGCL, WZZP, later 3WE, and uh, I'm a programming and marketing consultant for radio stations. Thank you. Uh, Chris Mavros, uh, Manning, Michaels. Uh, let's see. Uh, WZZP, uh, WZAK for 20 years, uh, CUE KDD, but uh, and a bunch of other stations. And now? Uh, now retired, but selling real estate. Okay. <laughs> making a few bucks. G98 with Brother Truck and Lenny. Yeah! 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 All right. Got it. Also, WZAK for a long time, JMO's where I started. And right now I'm doing an internet thing and uh, Kanye West just sampled a song of mine that I recorded. His song is called XTCY Ecstasy. And you know, that's what I'm into now. Thank you. All right. Going down the line. Andrea Kleinhans, WGCL Radio, and after that I was in newspaper and the credit union business and writing Letters to the other <laughs> <laughs> And next to you? Francesca de Capua. I was at GCL, WGCL, and then WQAL. And then I moved to Seattle and I was with Cairo, K I R O. And then, station. Um, oh, yeah. And then, Big station. <laughs> um, and then Kilo in Denver, Colorado Springs. They told me it was because the metric system was coming in. So it was bullshit. And after, after that, it doesn't matter. I kept getting fired. And now I'm in home health. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, it's fire All right. Oh, no. oh, no. Oh, no. All right. Sort of. <laughs> and gardening. <laughs> I'm brother trucking Lenny. <laughs> also a big liar. <laughs> yeah. Also a big liar. And uh, now I worked at LIT, GCL. Who are you? Uh, oh, Rick Monroe. <laughs> Very good. For sure. Sounds yeah. the same. It's a good sign you can remember. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ah, uh, you know, GCL, Wixie, ZZP, went out to California with uh, radio out there, and um, Transstar Satellite Network at the beginning when the satellite started. That's it. All right. Just Very hanging good. out now. Very good. Yeah. Next up. Hi, Bob Proud. I used to be Bob Payton. Yay! I was program director of WGCL, later program director of WZZP. In between that and after that, I was program director of X-Rock in Ciudad Juarez, programmed for a while longer, and then uh, when I was 29, they convinced me to cut my hair and put on a tie. <laughs> so I've been in management and more recently in the corporate suite, and now a semi-unemployed consultant living in Dallas. <laughs> Would it be better if we go over here? Okay, that's cool. <laughs> hey, Ray, over there! Look at this! <laughs> Hand down! <laughs> Blue, blue suede shoe. Right. And the best rhyme I have at this moment is don't abuse these shoes. <laughs> there you go. All right. Like Elvis, baby. You're part of your guardian. Scott Howard, uh, grateful to get into radio in Cleveland, Ohio, WMYT. Uh, it's been a crazy trip. Ended up at WMJI. But remember me as your partying guardian. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Monroe. I'm Maggie Brock. I am grateful to all the people here that I worked with at WZZP. It was my first radio station. Bob Proud hired me. Chuck Denson taught me how to do news. I got to do news all across the country. Spent a lot of time at WLS and uh, The Loop in Chicago. I was at KZZP also. I've had a great run and uh, I'm very happy to be here with all of these great people. Thank you. Hey, Maggie. Uh, Chuck Denson. WJMO, WABQ, WGAR. Oh boy, we're after that. <laughs> um, Howard University, Mutual Black Network News, WOK, um, WILD in Boston, uh, WNCI Columbus, KELP El Paso, 
You and couldn't keep a job, you, you, poor you, thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pleasure to be around all of these people that I've worked with and admired for many years. God bless all of you, and may you continue to have good and happy health. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Very good. Very good. All right. Next. Charlie Tudor. 298, 75 to 77. Jim Rafty is the real man. Retired now. Retired. Yep. Charlie, thank you. Okay. Which year? I was hired. Any. <laughs> okay. I was hired by Chris Bailey. Worked at Waxy in Rochester, WCAO in Baltimore, WQRK Norfolk, uh, the Big Weenie in Endicott for Irv Griffin, WNE, 10 or 1430 or something, and WTLB in Utica. Okay. Right and GCL. Yeah, and not with the news. Greg right. Anthony. Uh, Gosh, a whole host of stations. Put your hand up to your ear. Oh, that's the one! Wow! Oh my God! With a voice like that, with a voice like that, right. you can't talk without your hand up. Without your hand. Uh, <laughs> WJMO, WABQ, uh, WGCL, WZZP, uh, 1100, uh, WWJ, uh, WCNN, uh, in Atlanta, uh, WMAQ, uh, WVON, both uh, in Chicago. Uh, I still do voiceovers. I'm the concierge at the uh, Metropolitan at the Nine, and uh, semi-retired, actually. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, let me see if I can still. Oh, if you can. Okay. I'm gonna see if I can do it. Okay. Coming out of the news. Okay. Coming out of the news. Coming out of the news. Okay. Currently in Cleveland, 68 degrees. Now back to much more music and Charlie Tuna. <laughs> All right, Tim. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Tim Davison. Skip, what did we do? <laughs> what, whose idea was this? I blame you. What have you created? <laughs> this has been wonderful to see all you guys. I didn't work with all of you, a lot of you, for a little bit of time at GCL and CCP. I worked in Akron and Cleveland for about 12, 13 years until early 1980. I worked at Q105 in Tampa. First voice ever heard on the station. I'm hoarse as hell. Sorry about that. <laughs> Don't sound like a radio person. Uh, but got into sales in the early 80s. And I think what I missed the most was people, people like you guys. Yeah. I used to say to uh, the other salespeople, those people give you your income. And you know that too, Bob. Without them, you don't have anything to sell. Yeah. And sadly yeah. anymore, the bean sure. counter idiots have ruined our industry. Well, the corporations. We worked, yeah. And the corporations. Yeah. But we worked at a time where personalities were the product that the listeners loved and the advertisers paid to get to those listeners. And God bless all of you. Oh, I hope we can do this again sometime. Yeah. Sure, yeah. I hope you don't make 23 years tonight. <laughs> Next year. And Fred. How about tomorrow? Yeah. 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 Breakfast at yeah. Tim's house. Yeah. <laughs> Fred. My wife doesn't cook anymore. I'm Fred Rajaley. I worked in sales for like 25 years at WZZP, WGCL, WERE. WKSW, KISS 104 in Atlanta, WCAK, WJMO, WABQ, WDMT, Channel 55 in Akron, and had a ball with the all the all air people, more so than I have with my sales people. Yeah. They made a lot of money. <laughs> Very good. Get everybody? Did we get everybody? Did we get the guy at the head of the table? Yeah. Did you get the guy with the camera? Did okay. you get the camera uh, the whole time? Can I do mine over again? How about you? <laughs> <laughs> you really want to do it over do again? Do a second. That was hey, a production. Can we, can we, can we get Skip to tell the story about the time that the cleaning lady shot her gun off? Oh, I remember that. Oh, <laughs> go go for it. Great story. Yeah. Play, yeah. Play, play Barry White. Followers. I remember that. Play I, Barry White. You remember that? Yes, yeah. I do. <laughs> I'm on the air all by myself. It's a Friday night oh, at GCL. Some people, some young kids, about six or seven of them that I met, ripped, ripped that uh, at some outing called me uh, and said, Skip, we're downstairs, can we just come up and see a radio station and see what, what, how, it, how, how things work? 
I said, well, I'm thinking ah, I shouldn't really do this, and I really shouldn't have. So I said, well, all right, yeah, c come on up, but you can't stay very long. Uh, they get up there, they start watching. The cleaning lady comes around the corner, always a very nice lady. Uh, never had any problems with her. Christine. Uh, she, Christy was her name? Christine. Oh, Christine, okay. <laughs> I should remember that based on the story. So Christine <laughs> takes a look at the kids and turns to me and says, and she never was like this, but she was, you know, not feeling too good that night. <laughs> you, know, you know how that is, Scott, right? When you, you know. So anyhow, uh, she says, Skip, she says, are these people bothering you? And I said, Christine, no, no, they're, they're fine. They're, they're fans. I, if, you, if they bother you or they threaten you, I'll kick their ass out of here. And I said, don't know, Christine. And they're laughing, uh, the, the, these kids. So I do a break. I come back and I turn around and she has a gun in her hand. <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, and it's a real gun. And uh, the kids think it isn't, thank God, because I needed the listeners. And <laughs> And so I didn't tell them that it probably was. And she says, Skip, I'm telling you, if they don't leave and leave you alone, I'm going to shoot them. And I said to the kids there, she's, she's a jokester. She's just kidding. The gun's not even real. And so, but I said, nevertheless, she's, she's having a bad night. And she said, why don't you guys leave? So they're still hanging around a little bit longer than they should. I turn around to open my mic. I no sooner say G98 and I hear BOOM! I turn around, the gun's smoking, she shot, didn't shoot them, but she shot it into the wall of the studio. I said, kids, uh, you gotta leave, you really do. This is it. So then I'm thinking, this lady's nuts, I'm gonna turn around and do my last break, she's gonna by mistake or whatever, shoot me. So I thought, I gotta get the gun from her. So I said, uh, Christine, I said, I got an idea. We've been pals for a long time, and I really appreciate you protecting me. That was very nice of you. But they're gone. But just in case they come back, why don't you give me the gun? Then you can go back and clean some more, and I'll just defend myself. So that's a story about Christine. And, and by the way, I remember, uh, I think it was Rick Monroe, and I uh, found the, the shell. The bullet, yeah. I came and, and in. Rick, I believe Rick took it and put a little sign around it and pasted it right outside, <laughs> outside, right outside the studio door. Yeah, the, the bullet that owned it. It was a memo. Space. It said to <laughs> yeah. Skip O'Brien from jail, Crazy yeah. Christine regarding, and then the bullet slug was on the memo. Beautiful. And that hung on the wall for months. And do you yeah. still have it? it <laughs> yes. Really? <laughs> I don't, I don't, was it you and Was that right out of the shotgun jingle? Was that right out of the shotgun jingle? When uh, a gentleman that many of you know, Max Haywood, Dick Smith, yeah. passed away about a year ago, and Tim, Tim and I had the, the same birthday, the same birth date. He's what obviously much it? older. I'm one uh, year older. Uh, you're one year older. One year. Uh, so we were talking every birthday, and he kept me up to date and let me know that Max was not doing well, that he had passed. So he and I said, you know, we need to get together, and then Skip became part of it, because you live here, and Scott, and so the four of us had lunch down here in Akron about a year ago, and it was so nice, we said, man, we, we need to do this more often, I wish more people were here, and that was kind of the genesis, and then Tim, and especially Skip, picked up the ball and uh, ran with it, and the result is today, but some of the people that we have lost, that you may or may not remember, in addition to Max Haywood, were um, Captain Kirk Russell, who was our midday man and yep. production director yep. at, uh, uh, at WZZP, and later worked with me in El Paso. Um, Bill Tash, who was our chief engineer, when we watched, uh, watched uh, WZZP, he passed last year. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, yeah. A lady that worked for both WGCL, then we brought her to WZZP, Leah Gaffney. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we understand. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, she, she, she passed away the rest of our knowledge. Quite, yeah, I Googled her. Uh, we, understand, uh. we understand Gordon Stenbeck. Yes. He's gone. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Gordon. Wow. And that's fairly really recent because wow. he I was, I think, in Rubber City or one of the companies down here for a long time. But he owned uh, 94.9 before Tom Mandel bought it. Okay. Got I it. worked for him in Seattle. Yeah. You worked for uh, yeah, yeah, Gordon Stanley. Yeah. Stanley down in his. Where was he? He bought you a WBBL. I'm not sure who else. I know J.R. Nelson. J.R. Nelson, who was briefly our production director at ZZP, has passed. Dick Shue. Uh, uh, Dick, Dick Shue, who was our chief engineer. He was, I love Dick Shue. Uh, very nice. And I very nice. he worked in San Antonio. Well, WKRP. He was back in touch with Dick in San Antonio. Dick and I used to fly together, because he had that. And we'd go over to Ashtabula or whatever, the plane was over there, he picked me up at Hopkins. 
planes and we go fly around. It was twelve dollars an hour to rent the plane, yeah, including exactly. gas. It was and he was, he was uh, flying a lot in Texas. Please and, tell yeah, me he married a Shane woman. Passing. You know, I don't recall yeah. his murder. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, so I guess he was divorced <laughs> from this woman who still he was sort of in love with, and she what? Do you know about this? No, no, no. no. Oh, okay. I just, just, if it, I'll, I'd like to make you feel better, so he did. Oh. <laughs> so, oh, he married a wonderful okay. woman. Not as wonderful as you, but he married a wonderful yeah. woman. Yeah. <laughs> and Rick, 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 keep women happy. But she was, a, she was a story. But anyway, he was a sweetheart, dude. He really was. He was great. I'd bring up everybody coffee in the morning, and he'd say, you're a decent human being, Francesca. And every morning. Wow. Wow. Remember, Dick okay, always had the cigarette lit in the ashes. Yes, 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 yes. We knew we, we were flying. Yes. 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 Rick Monroe, yeah, Rick reminded me of a person that is really instrumental, possibly in my knowing all of you, a gentleman named Al Curling. Um, Al Wood Curling was a junior high school friend of mine, and when I was showing the door in Ashtabula in 1972, he was working at WGCL and suggested I come in, and that was actually my entree to WGCL, but it was still automated. Uh, and I was in there running the automation doing 2020 news. And Hal later became a, a, a big West Coast guy. Gary, Gary, yeah. Cocker, yeah. Gary, Gary Cocker, Gary Cocker, 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 Cocker in San Diego. Yeah. And he passed about three years ago yeah. in San Diego. I worked with him at Lee Andrews, uh, at oh, Lee Andrews who was one of our first W2, who was, you know, I was the PD of GCL after I'd been there a year and worked for four or five other G uh, PDs because GCL at that time had a gentleman named. John Tenaglia uh, at the time. Oh my company. God. And that, you uh, walked in the door one yeah. time on your knees yeah, and well, said, Hi, I'm John Tenaglia. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you Yes, and John later spent time in prison. John Tenaglia. He beat up a waiter. Yes, he beat up a waiter in an Italian restaurant. Uh, when he got into a fight over the food, he was in, in there, Cleveland. He in spent New York time. Or? This was in Philadelphia oh, yeah. for uh, yeah. aggravated assault. That's a whole other story. He hit on my wife at a Christmas party. He hit on my wife at a Christmas people <laughs> that we worked with in the same building uh, that have passed over the years. Mike Payne will always have a special place in my heart for oh, yeah. the help he gave me very early in my career. Yeah, but, I suppose Wayne uh, Shane. Uh, 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 Wayne uh, 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 Shane. Wayne Shane. Wayne Shane. Wayne Shane. Wayne Shane. Yes. Yes. Also, uh, for a short while, uh, Ron Dennington, Ronnie oh, Dennington. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's yeah. been gone a number well, of years. Yeah, well, okay. the glasses. Uh, yeah, yeah, we remember. Also, uh, you were right yes. about me. Hey, John. I should have yeah. called yeah. Wayne Shaw. Hey, stop dying. You're breaking stop up your bed, dude. Oh. No more dying. No more dying. Okay. Let's make it I'm happen. sorry. Let me I agree. You may die. No more dying. Make it so. Okay. Deal. Okay. Anyhow. That's all right. All right. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. One How more. many people owe their careers to Bob Payton? Right here. Yeah. Right here. <laughs> jockeys at GCL told me and they like some of them had been at four other stations and they said it was the craziest place they'd ever worked at. Yeah. Oh God. Oh, yeah. Well I know you have a lot of that. Who was the general manager that used to walk in with the two Airedales? I don't remember. Was he was the one who was having an affair with one of the Dave Knowles. Dave Knowles. Dave Knowles. Dave Knowles. Dave Knowles. Yeah. 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 He had trying to have an affair with me. Yeah. When I was on a trans star <laughs> Uh, when we put the staff together for the satellite network, we were telling war stories. Uh, we had hired people from all over the country, and I told three GCL stories, and these guys are all saying, that's got to be bullshit. Oh, no, they don't one of them was the Crazy Christine story. The other one was me getting shot at at point-blank range in front of the building. The windows, I'm trying to lock the door. They had threatened me on the... Long story, longer. Uh, middle of the night, I give away an album to the 10th caller, and I get a call going, you cut my sister off. She was called at 3 before 5. If she doesn't win the album next hour, I'm going to blow your brains out. Oh, didn't he get on the fire escape? I went, I went, fuck you. Well, the next hour, I give away the album, and a girl doesn't win. Uh -oh. And I'm there alone. You know that the front door was wide open on the Euclid. Oh, little right. phone cord right. doors up there. No one ever locked it. We were the last tenant in the building. The price building. I remember that. 17, yes. 15 Euclid. So oh, for oh, years. Yeah. So anyway, yep. I figure, you know, I better put a long record on and go down and, and lock the door. I am locking the door. And I then I figured, these people may only live blocks away from here. I don't know, you know. 
So I'm locking the door. A car pulls up right to the curb, just the sidewalk between us. A guy leans out the back window, bang, 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 and I'm falling backwards. One of the bullets later, I showed people for 15 years later, long after GCL was gone, if I was in the neighborhood, I'll show you where I was. It was right at head level. That bullet hole was in the aluminum frame of the door. Now, I had the key in my hand, and I ran up the stairs thinking they're come piling out of the car to finish me off, and I didn't know whether I got the door locked or not. And I run upstairs, lock the little crappy foam door, call the police. Yeah, yeah, we're on it. And it turned out the police took like two hours to get there. <laughs> These guys pulled around into the back lot, no lights on, and I could see their cigarettes. They're waiting for 6 a.m. for me to get off to finish the job. <laughs> I call the police again, repeatedly. Yeah, yeah, right, we'll be there. <laughs> Central Police Station is five blocks away. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, Dennington had just been hired, the program director, and he didn't have a key yet. So he said, Come down. no, don't lock that door, I'm coming oh, no. in, you know, at quarter to six. And that's kind of why the door wasn't locked in the first place. So these guys are waiting for me to get off. Then I, the hotline rings, Dennington had tried the front door and it was locked. He goes across to the donut shop and goes, you f f f f fuck, I need to get out of here. <laughs> that sounds like you. I, 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 I told you to leave the <laughs> goddamn door. <laughs> Get out of there. Just stay away. These guys are in the back lot. They're going to kill us. And the police won't come. So I call the police again. The, I, and I'm looking. And I don't want to be backlit. You know, the production room. Uh, no lights on. I'm peeking out the thing. Like, you know, Inspector Clouseau. And they're still there. But I see a cop car pulling south past the parking lot to turn right. on to Euclid. To get donuts. To, yeah, really. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so these guys just pulled out. They saw the cop go and they left. So I meet the cops down there, and there's glass everywhere, there's bullet holes in the door. I never did get the door locked, but that bullet that went through the aluminum had a little sliver of aluminum jammed between the doors, and that's the only thing. It acted like a lock. They yeah. couldn't get in. Well, Jack, did you have the Apple hat on? <laughs> wow. I forgot that was you. Yeah. I yeah, that. so that's when they said, from now on, the door is locked constantly. And then it was like a week later when the door wasn't locked and these people came in on skip. Yeah. And then I'll tell you, Christine's relatives get around with that gun. Don't they? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 Christine, Chris, Christine's granddaughter that didn't get that album. So I'm they telling these stories. I'm telling these stories out in Colorado Springs. And they don't believe you. They don't believe me. But guess who the manager of the local station where we're borrowing studios? It's Dave Knoll. Oh. <laughs> so we, we bring, I go, guys, Dave, come over here. And we went out to dinner that night. Asking where the dogs were, the no. great Poupon. <laughs> no. But anyway, anyway, uh, Dave, Dave confirmed every detail of every one of those stories. And these guys all looked at me and went, that is the craziest station we've ever heard of. So, you know, it's been speculated that it might have been, you know, you be the judge. But <laughs> I saw everything at that station from my, my program director cutting coke. And I don't mean Coca Cola. Yeah, yeah. In the middle of the daytime, during the week. Oh, and yeah, get in favor of I wasn't going to mention that. Yeah, I got yeah, very yeah, famous. I got the little thing you used to keep it in. There's nothing. Yeah, yeah. A little box. Uh, well, the other, the other, the, the third story in the oh, was triumvirate was I walk in and the lady on the front desk who I can't remember it might have been you, but I don't think so. Who had the red hair? No, no. Real pretty, she used to always sit in the front desk. Sandy was Klein? It? No, she was a salesperson. Sandy Myers. No, no, no. Sandy Myers wound up. Uh, Mary, Mary Dave, Dave, that's who it was. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Sandy had a wet paper towel turban around her face, and I walked what? in and went, whoa, what? who died in here? <laughs> and she says, just go home, we're running tapes today. <laughs> in, in one of the vacant suites down the hall, there were some squatters who had taken a dump in our air conditioning intake. Oh, there were people living in these vacant suites that we didn't even know about. At the end of the hall. At the end of the hall. Near where the rest is. <laughs> I was doing afternoons one weekend, and that door, the W.D. Sandford did his news and went home, slammed the door shut, and I had to go to the bathroom, so I put on roundabout. And I got locked out. I <laughs> <laughs> those real rubber feet in to hold it yeah. open. Yeah. I thought, man, I didn't have a key, there was nobody there, so I did one of these as hard as I could. I kicked the door down. Yeah. I thought I was going to break well, my Well, W.D. was living in that bathroom. He was. For six weeks, he said. He said to say hello, by the way. John Chai. He said, I, 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 I talked to W.D. Everybody say zip 106. All right. Zip 106. Yeah, how about you?
G98. <laughs> G98, zip 106 reunion. Here we go. All right. Thanks for the guys who put this thing together. Skip O'Brien. Yes. Yep. Yo. My pleasure, guys. My pleasure. Thanks, guys. Thank you.